Hello there, I'm James Preston and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney and this is the Mid-Market Pulse. Let's get started with the Mid-Market Commentary for today and see how the ASX 200 traded by lunchtime. Extending the rally for the fourth straight session, the Australian share market is trading higher into the afternoon, led by gains in technology and utility stocks. The benchmark S&P ASX 200 is up 9.8 points or 0.14% at 7,125, trading above its 20-day moving average. The index has gained 2.79% over the last five sessions and is currently 0.67% off its 52-week high. Earlier today, the ASX opened lower following weak cues from Wall Street, which closed lower in overnight trades amid soft macro data, which weighed on investor sentiment. On the sectoral front, seven of 11 sectors trading in green, while information technology is leading the rally. Outperforming the benchmark indices, the tech sector has surged 2.4% intraday and 9.04% in the past five days. Other sectors that lead on the ASX include telecommunications services, utilities, consumer discretionary, financial, industrials, and of course, consumer staples. On the flip side, healthcare, energy, materials, and A-REITs were among the worst performing sectors on the ASX throughout the morning and also into the early afternoon. Now the top performing stocks in this index are healthcare firm ALS and tech firm WiseTech Global, which rose between four to 10%. The metals and mining stocks are among top drag on the benchmark. Mining titan BHB Group tumbled 2.3% to hit a five-week low, while rival Rio Tinto eased by 2%. Energy stocks dropped 1% even as oil prices moved a shade higher overnight. The index heavyweights Wally fell 1.8%, followed by Beach Energy losing 1.4%. Gold mining stocks are trading higher owing to a rise in gold prices. Chalice Mining led the gain by advancing 8.5%, followed by Tieto Minerals. And now moving on to the gainers and losers, and there is plenty of news in this department. The best performing stocks on the ASX are ALS, WiseTech Global, Regis Resources, Silver Lake Resources, and Next DC. On the flip side, some of the worst performing stocks are surprisingly Kogan.com, Fisher & Paykel Healthcare Corporation, Redbubble, OZ Minerals and also Auckland International Airport. Well, let's move on to the news making shares of the day and it has been a very, very big day for ALS. Their shares gained as much as 7.43% to just over $11.7. And that was the top percentage gainer on Benchmark ASX. The company has reported 35.1% growth in this financial year, net attributable profit at just over $172.6 million. As losses from impairment were offset by proceeds from China's asset sales. It has also declared a final dividend of 14.6% per share more than double from a year earlier. The newly listed company Pepper Money continued its lacklustre performance, falling nearly 2% to $2,560 on the second day of its trading. The non-bank lender made a weak debut on the ASX on Tuesday, with its stock closing 9.69% lower at $2.61. A part of Pepper Financial Services Group, the non-bank lender has raised approximately $500.1 million by issuing 173.2 million fully paid ordinary shares at an offer price of $2.89 apiece. The share price of Connection Telematics is trading higher by 3.1% at 0.016 of a dollar after the company announced the commercial launch of its OEM agnostic software platform CXZTrack. 
CX Z-Track is a highly scalable mobility platform that supports any branded vehicle for both courtesy transportation program and non-CTP use by dealers and OEMS. There's a lot more to check out in the market, but before we take a deeper look, we'll take a short break right here on Kalkine TV. Albert, can I get that one quicker? The market takes the weekend off, but your money won't. Get a comprehensive update on the ASX listed stocks and market trends. Watch the experts touch upon the fundamental and technical developments and trending strategies in the equity space. We will be your daily guide as you explore the Australian share market, be it global vaccine developments or China's trade relations or global political turmoil or economic revival prospects. We will bring you live updates driving the equity market trends. Kalkine TV. Welcome back, James Preston with you on Kalkine TV. Great to have your company for the Mid-Market Pulse. Let's get back into our market commentary. And shares of medical equipment maker MicroX are up 15.6% at 0.37 of a dollar. Its biggest intraday percentage gain since the 1st of March 2021. The company has informed the exchange that it has received approval for its Rover bedside imager by the US Food and Drug Administration. It plans to start marketing the Rover immediately in the US and in other global markets. Moving on, and the share price of WAKOLN has gained 2.7% to sit at 19 cents after it signed a 15-year contract with one of Western Australia's leading energy solution providers. Clean Energy Fuels Australia. The agreement provides for the storage and revaporization infrastructure, including delivery of liquid natural gas by a virtual pipeline. Next, and Mosaic Brands share price has enjoyed a strong day, gaining as much as 21.739% to 70 cents a share on the back of a strong outlook for the financial year 2021. The women's fashion retailer now expects a full year underlying a bitter of about $48 million this financial year, helped partly by the growth of online sales. The group expects to achieve comparable sales growth in the next financial year, which will result in a financial year underlying a bitter of about $50 million for the financial year of 2022. Next, and Netcentric subsidiary, Newfang Live Commerce, became exclusive technology payment and fulfillment partner to eShop Live. Now, if you're not familiar with eShop Live, it's a leading social live commerce platform based in Malaysia, and the contract is for an initial period of three years. Moving on to our next stock, and Viva Leisure shares extended their gains for a second session and rose over 2% to $1.97 a day after the health club chain introduced a new bi-monthly reporting format to inform its shareholders of its trading status and other relevant information related to business operations. The Canberra-based fitness club and aquatic facility operator has also released earning guidance for financial year 2021 but it has warned its performance would be impacted by higher costs. That said though, it expects its revenue to be in the range of between $81 million to $83 million, registering a strong growth of 25.6% or potentially even as high as 31.2% over the first half of the 2021 financial year. And now let's look at the commodity market update. Crude oil futures edged higher during mid-morning Asian trade, with Brent crude oil futures for August delivery rising by 0.2% by to 68.56 US dollars per barrel. The WTI crude oil futures for July delivery traded at 66.09 US dollars per barrel, up by 0.03%. Crude oil prices rose on the back of increased demand from the Northern Hemisphere driving season and the easing of COVID-19 lockdowns more globally. In the bullion market, gold prices rose on Wednesday with the spot gold price climbing by 0.2% to $1,902.88 US dollars per ounce. 
Shifting from the US to the home soil here and the Aussie dollar is trading higher whilst bond yields have fallen. The Australian dollar, which is a commodity price sensitive currency, is trading at 77.56 cents against its US counterpart. On Tuesday, it rose slightly against the US dollar, gaining 0.05 of a percent to 77.58 cents. The currency has been trading between 76.75 cents and 78.91 cents since April 15, as soaring commodities prices have prompted the Chinese government to curb unreasonable cost increases. The yield curve flattened further on Wednesday as investors bought the long end of the curve on the view that price pressure would be stable for the rest of the year. The benchmark Australian 10-year bond yield was down 2.63% at 1,595. It's also been a very busy period for Asia markets and we'll tackle our Pacific Ocean neighbours in just a moment, but we'll be back after a short break right here on Kalkine TV. At Kalkine TV, we'll take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility, as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. Whether space travel will gain momentum, while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts, our experts will share their timely inputs. So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Calkine TV. Thanks for sticking with us. James Preston here with you on Kalkine TV, live from Sydney, and this is the Mid-Market Pulse. Well, the Asian stock markets opened largely steady on Wednesday, undermining weak cues from Wall Street, which closed lower in overnight trade as softer economic data weighed on investor sentiment. Hong Kong's Hang Seng was the best performer in the region's major markets, rising 1.75%, followed by Taiwan's Taiwan Weighted Index, which rallied to 1.58%. In a similar trend, South Korea's KOSPI was up 0.2%, while the Straits Times Index in Singapore was trading flat with negative bias. Meanwhile, New Zealand's benchmark S&P and ZX50 traded lower by 0.1%. In the overnight trade, US stock as investors remained cautious amid volatility in the markets and soaring home prices. The S&P fell by 0.21%, the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped by 0.24% and the Nasdaq Composite Index also ended flat. Moving into the digital world of cryptocurrency and as always there's plenty of movement in this sector, recently Tesla CEO Elon Musk tweeted that he had talked with Bitcoin miners in North America and discussed energy usage transparency. Responding to Musk's tweets, Bitcoin evangelist and MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor said that Bitcoin Mining Council hopes to, quote, manage concerns, especially from uniformed parties, end quote, about the cryptocurrency's energy usage. The price of Bitcoin, the largest cryptocurrency by market value, hit a high of US $39,453.39 in the last 24 hours and was currently trading a little lower at US $38,404.04, down 2.4%. Ether, the second largest crypto, rose by 0.35%, to US $2,705.72, while the Shiba Inu based meme currency Dogecoin was trading lower by 4.9% to US 0.35 of a dollar. Now we're not quite done with the antics of Elon Musk though. Stick around because in just a moment we'll take a look at some massive changes for Tesla's production right here on Kalkine TV. At Kalkine TV, we'll take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. 
We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility, as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. Whether space travel will gain momentum, while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts, our experts will share their timely inputs. So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Calkine TV. Great to have your company. James Preston with you on Calkine TV and this is the Mid Market Pulse live from Sydney and it's time to delve into why Tesla is doing away with radar for autopilot in some of their models. Electric vehicle manufacturer Tesla on Tuesday said that the company is ditching radar and replacing it with a camera-based system to enable autopilot features in its Model 3 and Y vehicles in the Canadian and US markets. These will be the first Tesla vehicles to rely on camera vision and neural net processing to, to deliver autopilot, full self-driving and certain active safety features, the company said in a recent blog post. During the transition period, the cars with Tesla Vision are expected to be delivered with auto steer's maximum speed capped at 75 miles per hour or 120 kilometers per hour. And Smart Summon and Emergency Lane Departure Avoidance are also expected to be disabled with the delivery. These features would be restored through a series of over-the-air software updates. However, other features like autopilot and full self-driving will be active at delivery, the company also added. This transition seems to be a part of product testing by the company, being the higher volume cars for the company. Transitioning Model 3 and Model Y to Tesla Vision first allows the company time to analyze a large volume of real world data in a short amount of time, the company said. However, on the other hand, the Model S and Model X will continue to be equipped with radar-supported autopilot until the company, quote, determines the appropriate time to transition those vehicles to Tesla Vision, end quote. The same goes for all the models built for markets other than the US and Canada. Overnight, the shares of Tesla itself closed down by 29 basis points to US $604.69 a piece. And before I head off, here is a very interesting astronomy event to look forward to tonight. A bigger view is on the way when Australia will witness a once in a decade super blood moon. And no, that's not a song by Wolf Mother. It will be happening in the skies tonight. Interestingly, it is the first full moon combined with the lunar eclipse since the year of 2018 and it will be visible all the way from Perth to Sydney. A point to be noted here is that the moon view would differ depending upon the places you belong across Australia. The process will be initiated at 7.44pm on the east coast or 5.44pm on the west coast. The best times to see the moon at the respective locations all around our major cities in the country is as follows, 8.48pm in Adelaide, 8.48pm in Darwin, 7.18 in Perth and 9.18 for Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Hobart and our nation's capital, Canberra. Now it is important to note that the initial stage of the eclipse would not be visible in western regions of Australia due to its positioning, but those residing in Perth can witness the changing colour of the moon to rustic red just after sunset. Now in addition to this, believe it or not, there is a Qantas flight to nowhere flying over Sydney for three hours to view the moon and unbelievably it's sold out within two minutes of going on sale. Now that really does bring a new meaning to both two tickets to paradise and a ticket to nowhere. Just depends if you're an Eddie Money fan or a fan of Kenny Rogers. Now whether you are hopping on that Qantas flight or you're just taking snaps from your own backyard, make sure to let us know exactly how you've captured the super blood moon by sharing your snaps with our social media channels across Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's it for now, but I can't wait to see your snaps coming through tonight and also having a good glance tomorrow morning. Make sure to stay with us right here on Calkine TV for the latest news and trending market updates live from Sydney.